My name is uh, Elliot Schleifer. I'm the co-CEO and founder of Trunk.io. We build developer experience toolkit, basically to help all engineering teams move as efficiently as possible. I think, you know, this topic is like dear to heart because, you know, obviously I've run large engineering organizations for many years. I've been in technology for 20 plus years, worked at big tech, at startups, you know, and uh, it's always interesting to see like what engineers want to focus on. Um, engineers constantly are kind of like, well, we have to go and do this. And I kind of, you know, always ask the follow up, like, is this a have to, or this would be like a cool to do. But not all tech debt is created equal. So say like, how do we identify what tech debt your engineers want to work on because they saw a new cool like front end system and they want to go and bring in that framework because everyone's talking about it or because hey this version of kubernetes is about to be deprecated inside aws and if we don't migrate literally this system will stop working like these are two different things both of them could put fall in this giant bucket of tech debt one of them obviously is like more important than the other most interesting is kind of this phenomenon of uh that i talk about you know in this talk of like um, learning the wrong lessons from big tech. And I think this is something that, you know, um, engineers that move from big tech into startups, you know, will constantly make, um, I see all the time people talk about like, well, you know, we built this whole system we use microservices up the wazoo. We have a million micro repos and this type of, I'd say that is itself like a form of tech that you're basically way too much for your team of small team to basically maintain. And I think this is a lesson learned from people who worked at big tech that had to do things like break apart a giant monolith, like GitHub has a giant Ruby monolith. Like they've talked about this, but like GitHub is a giant successful company that powers like the earth. Seems like maybe that's not a problem, right? Like GitHub is extremely successful and they've managed to, to make it work with, you know, a technology stack that, you know, now anyone would be like, I'm gonna go build a Ruby monolith. So I'm gonna be like, you're crazy to do that, right? So I think like, is that really a lesson we should learn? Don't build monoliths? I don't know, like I, I'd say like in the talk, we try to explore, maybe we should see what are the benefits of a monolith versus not, what does it cost you to break these things apart? And maybe uh, as your first mover, your advantage in a startup is to move really quickly. Um, and if you basically shard too much stuff into a lot of repos and a lot of different microservices, you might be taking on a bunch of tech debt before you even need it. I think every time we look at work uh, in a sprint planning or whatever type of you know engineering practice you employ, figure out is this something that the customers are going to care about, right? Tech debt is on itself is not negative, like it is just a, a feature of, of product engineering. And at the end of the day, what we really care about is can we deliver products to customers, whoever that might be, um, and then will customers care about what you're doing, right? So sometimes your tech debt, like if you pay that down, customers aren't going to care. They don't know you did it. Like it doesn't matter. You know, some of those some of those pay payments like are important. Uh, you know, as I said before, if something's going to literally be deprecated, like you have an old version of Python in use and you're moving to Python three, yeah, you got to do that work. But your customers aren't going to care about it, right? So some things you have to do, and your customers don't care. Some things uh, you want to do, and then you know, and there's you know a trade-off, obviously, to doing that work one way or the other. Sometimes so much tech debt basically makes engineering efficiency hard, and therefore you need to pay down that debt uh, to keep being efficient. I think the main takeaway is like talk to each other about like why do we want to do this? What are we going to get out of it at the end of all this work? What do we win? What do we lose? And, you know, be able to take that into sprint planning, take that, you know, into your discussion and say like, how much is this going to cost us to deal with? Um, and, and I think there's this other nice idea of like, we take on debt in a capitalist society all the time. Like we have mortgages and that's fine. Like tech debt is like a final kind of mortgage. Like you're basically taking a huge, you're borrowing against like the future efficiency of your business to like move faster. Uh, and I think that there, you should kind of leverage tech debt, just like you leverage any form of debt, make yourselves faster, more efficient, and then realize like, hey, at some point we'll have to pay this down. But if we're paying that down, that probably means we're successful, right? It's like, if you get to the point where you have to break apart your monolith and that's gonna take you a year, well, guess what? Maybe you're actually now a 300 person organization and you're massively successful and guess it's not gonna be fun, but you got there because you moved fast, right? So recognize how you can move fast sometimes, take on tech debt and it's okay.